doing here? Hi everybody. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Arm Review here, a podcast where I, Matthew Bussey, watch and review science sounds top greatest movies of all time. I should be meditating right now. I'm recording this after work and I cannot meditate because I cannot get this movie I'm going to talk about today out of my brain. I watched this for a second time the other day because I just had to, because I loved it and I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And guess what? I missed some things. So it all worked out. Anyway, I hope that you're all doing well. Uh, this week I am, it's, uh, I'm recording this at the start of a week, uh, so on Monday, and I am randomly obsessed with two things. Ancient, no, it's not called that. What's the show called? Hold on. UFO Witness? Oh, I'm thinking of Ancient Aliens. UFO Witness is a show on Discovery Plus, and this is my fake sponsor ad for it. So UFO Files, if you are... Or UFO Witness, Jesus Christ. UFO Witness, if you are... If you work for that show and you're listening to this podcast, I will... I won't give you money, but I'll let you give me money if I can talk about your show. And it doesn't look like you're showing you episodes anymore, but um, I will help you bring it back. And what's my other obsession? Oh, Lilo and Stitch. I keep laughing at that line. We thought it was dead. It was hit by a truck. And whenever I say it, nobody ever laughs because a lot of things I say don't make people laugh. I just, that makes them quote, nervously chuckle. Hence my fake production company. I know I'm fake. I am fake, 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 fake. I say, I use that word a lot, but it's true. But yeah, I don't really make people laugh. I did make somebody laugh the other day though, but it wasn't me. I just showed them a TikTok of somebody farting in a church in Budapest. But, uh, that's either neither here nor, nor there. That's neither here nor there. Ooh, ha, 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 that's hard to say for me. Speech impediment. I'm sorry. Still haven't gotten over it. Still can't pronounce my R's and my S's without sounding stupid. Okay. Today's movie, though, let's get started, shall we? First of all, um, no, actually, I'm going to wait for the first of all. This movie, are you ready? Are you ready? It's Bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Bananas, bananas, bananas batshit BS bananas. And I loved every frame, every shot of this film. It is a movie called, are you ready? Black Narcissus. This is the story of a high endeavor that tried and tested a woman in the remote background of Asia. The story of a prince and a beggar maid, and of a nun who gave up her vows. Why should we want to keep you here against your will? Because you're all jealous of me. Especially you. The clash of strong personalities. I understood you wanted to see me. We want to talk to you on business. I suppose you want to talk to me on anything else. Sorry. I don't know why you are being so rude to me, Mr. Dean. I have to talk business with you, whether I like it or not. The contrast of present peace and self-denial with the rich memories of the full years that have passed. They renounced the world of men, but found that the world was not to be denied. I gave up my vows. I finished with them up there. I see. I love you. I had to have the young general. I couldn't turn out the holy man. I couldn't stop the wind from blowing and the air from being as clear as crystal, and I couldn't hide the mountain. I told you it was no place to put a nunnery. There's something in the atmosphere that makes everything seem exaggerated. Don't you understand? <laughs>
eh, that trailer's a little misleading. That kind of makes it sound like a big Hollywood epic, you know, and the music isn't really right. And this actually is not really an epic. I mean, it is an epic movie, but it's not like four hours long and, you know, like, oh, look at me, look at me. It's not like that. Uh, Wow. Well, first of all, okay, here's what I was going to say. The first of all statement I was going to say. It is truth universally acknowledged that any movie that begins with black in the title is going to be one of my favorite movies of all time. It's so true. Black Christmas, the original, one of my favorites. Black Swan, duh, one of my favorites. Black Snake Moan, a lot of people did not understand it. It was very poorly marketed because it's actually a movie that is impossible to market because it's so damn weird. Loved it. One of my favorite movies. One of the first R-rated movies that my parents used to kind of, I think they actually let me buy that. And it's pretty naughty. Yeah, but I love it. Christina Ricci, Samuel L. Jackson, Justin Timberlake, so good. Oh, and the dude, Renee from True Blood, season one. Love True Blood so much. You should too, except for the last two seasons. I thought that they were garbage. <coughs> anyway, oh, sorry, that was a cough sneeze. Um, Yeah, so Black, anything with Black uh, in the title of the movie, I'm going to love. Black Narcissus is now another addition to my list of favorite movies that have Black in the title. Wow. Oh me, oh my, wow. So this movie I've always heard of. I always knew this one famous shot of the movie of this nun. She's dressed in all white, this all white dress. And she's standing over this cliff and there's this big bell at the edge of the cliff and she's she's ringing it. And she's at the very top. I don't know how else to say she's at the very top of the cliff and it is so beautiful and breathtaking. That's the shot that I always remember from this movie, but I had never seen it. Not until like a few weeks ago. And like I said, I rewatched it the other day. It came out in 1947. It's in beautiful Technicolor. It is a Powell and Pressburger movie. Now, does anybody remember who those directors are? Huh? Huh? Comment right now. I'm just kidding. Powell and Pressburger, Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. Uh, I've reviewed a few of their movies. And I've like liked some of their movies, but not really love some of their movies. I love this movie. They did I Know Where I'm Going. They did uh, A Canterbury Tale. They did blah, 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 The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. Uh, they did another movie called The Red Shoes, which I think is on this list and I have not seen it yet. And I've spoken ad, na ad nauseum about them, but I understand if you don't remember because uh, life is busy and that also was like episodes ago. Yeah, but they were a, a British directing duo, and they're very famous because they kind of had total control over, over everything that they did. And they wrote and directed and produced, like, everything that they did. They didn't—not everything they wrote was originally written. Uh, like, Black Narcissus, for example, was based on a book by uh, this author called Rumor Godden. And never heard of her. But amazing story amazing story and this uh movie is so famous like every film director not every but so many of them will mention black narcissus as you know one of the films that made them want to be films with want to be film <laughs> not films filmmakers when they were younger i don't know how else to say why i love this movie apart from saying it's just crazy, and I love it. There's no one way to really explain this movie. It doesn't really fit in one genre. Overall, it is a very intense, very uh, mysterious psychological drama. Thriller. A drama thriller. A driller. It is. Um, it's also, I found it to be very campy at times. I found it to just be very kind of oddly erotic too it's like a very erotic the second time i watched it even i was like wow th for 1947 jesus christ it's that it's it's just so much it's that movie that makes me just go oh wow yeah i mean i'm speechless also i mean the restoration of this film is positively pitch perfect amazing this came out in 1947 the restoration it makes it look like a movie from the future it literally makes it look like a movie that has not been released yet in like 20 you know 53 and if you're listening to this podcast in 2053 and we're all still alive then it's like listening watching a movie in 2099 and if you're listening to this in 2099 okay i'll shut up now yeah wow so gorgeous to look at excellent plot a really just enticing premise Great performances. Um, and again, I mean, I just have to call out the cinematography. The cinematography, which is by uh, this uh, British guy named Jack Cardiff. I think it's how you say his name. Cardiff or Cardiff. 
you watch it and it's it kind of like paves the way for so many future filmmakers and how they can play with the camera and play with flashbacks and and you know cut cross cutting between flashbacks and present day and because you watch so many older movies and the way that they deal with flashbacks it's so lazily done a lot of the time because you know if a character has a flashback the camera will like slowly zoom in on them and then the the image will just go blurry like you know kind of like like water coming down a window Oh, I like that analogy. You know, it does that. And then it's a flashback. In this movie, it's so much more cleverly done. And I loved it. So, I have a stomachache right now. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I just cracked my knuckles. That was real. Now, okay, let's get into the movie, shall we? Here is what the movie is about. Okay? Okay. Plot synopsis. Overall, this is a drama about nuns, and I love nun dramas because there's a lot of conflict with a lot of characters, huh? Because here's what you got to remember. Nuns or anybody who's super religious, you know, they worry that they're going to sin. That's a big fear of theirs. And in this film, it's all about that. Yeah. I also just, anytime till the day I die, I think about, till the day I die, when I, whenever I think about nuns, I'm going to just think about Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost yelling, I know you're not thinking about giving this $4 million to a bunch of nuns. Anyway. Oh my God. Black narcissists. Okay. General Toda, Toda Ray, I think it's like, Rai, I think it's how you say his name, I'm sorry. The Rajput ruler of a princely state in the Himalayas invites the congregation of the servants of Mary to establish a school and hospital at Mopu, a dilapidated palace situated on a high cliff. Sorry. My throat, oh, I had to swallow. Several monks previously failed to start a school there. The general's agent, Mr. Dean, Mr. Dean is played by actor David Far Farrar, I think is how you say his name, describes the social and environmental difficulties the sisters will face. The ambitious Sister Cloda is appointed Sister Superior and is sent with four other nuns. Sister Philippa for gardening, Sister Bryony for the infirmary, Sister Blanche, better known as Sister Honey, oh, that's my old dog's name, Honey, not Sister, to teach lace making, and the emotionally unstable Sister Ruth for general classes. So Sister Cloda, she is the main character in this film and she's played amazingly by actress Deborah Carr. Deborah Carr was also in Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, but I mainly remember her from The King and I. She was a very famous British actress. And uh, Sister Ruth is played by Kathleen Byron. Scary in this film, as you'll hear. As you'll see here. Mr. Dean is unimpressed and predicts the women will last only until the beginning of the monsoon. Ooh. So Mr. Dean's a little bit of a chauvinist in this film. I mean, he's always shirtless in this. Anytime he's on screen and he's just a little bit, you know, he knows he's kind of like a chick magnet and he kind of knows, he. it's like he's not really flirting with the women in this film, but he knows how to get under their skin a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit of a conniving uh, bastard. Okay. While setting up the convent, the sisters face difficulties with the old palace and also the local Hindu population, often clashing with the native caretaker, Angu Aya. Angu Aya, so she's a little kooky in this film. She's played by actress Mae Hallett, and she likes to yell a lot. Yeah. Uh, the sisters take in Kanchi, a local girl, to try and control her erratic behavior, and they also tutor the general's heir, referred to as the young general, in... Oh, I just lost my place. Jesus Christ. Sorry, that was crazy. Um, Tudor the General's heir, referred to as the Young General, in Western culture prior prior to a trip to Britain. Aya whips Kanchi for stealing, but the Young General stops her. He soon falls in love with Kanchi, creating a situation that Mr. Dean compares to the tale of the King and the Beggar Maid. That's just a, a famous uh, ballad that uh, I think it's an African ballad? From 16th century ballad. Time out. I didn't take a note on this, but I am curious now. I can't find it. I can't find out. Oh, it involves an African king. That's what I'm thinking of. Kanchi is played by uh, this actress named Jean Simmons, who I really recognize her name, but I, I, I'm thinking of J.K. Simmons, and the young who is a man. The young general is played by Sabu, who uh, is very good in this film. He was an Indian actor. And he was in a lot of films in uh, the UK and the United States as well. It's my first time I ever heard about them. 
So yeah, they have a little bit of a thing, but it's not really a big deal in the movie. And you just have to remember that Kanchi is a little wild and, and uh, Sabu's character, the young general, is very, uh, he's a good guy. He's a good mensch, as I say to anyone, even though I continue to think that everybody is Jewish when they're not. But he's a good mensch. He's a good guy. He comes to the convent and he uh, really just wants to learn and get a good education. And Sister Cloda at first is like, well, you're not a child and I don't know. But then he's like, no, I promise I'll be good. And he is good. Each convent member begins experiencing ill health and emotional problems caused by their surroundings. So this is where shit hits the fan and everybody starts to lose their mar- lose their marbles. So Philippa loses herself in the environment and plants the vegetable garden with flowers. <gasps> Ruth, already highly strung, becomes increasingly jealous of Cloda and obsessed with Mr. Dean, leading her to renounce the Order. (gasps) Cloda recalls a failed romance, which prompted her to join the Order. (gasps) Honey's growing attachment to the local children ends disastrously after she gives medication to a fatally ill baby. I'm not going (gasps) to at that, because that is actually a really sad moment. One of the people, one of the kids has a baby who's born deathly ill. And Sister Honey is like really a, a sweet old, a sweet young lady, and she wants, she's not old, sweet young lady who wants to save it. And then we later find out that she gave medication that ended up killing it. So it's really, really sad. Also, don't like be afraid because you don't like see any of that happen, but still. Cloda, though, Sister Cloda is an interesting character because, you know, she's very scary in this film. She is very strict, she never smiles. And when you see her backstory, you know, she's someone who was really used to being handed gifts. You know, she's someone who used to love being kind of materialistic, but now she's working in the convent where that's like a sin. She's not supposed to be that way at all, you know? So everybody is just slowly kind of going crazy in their own way. Now, Sister Ruth is definitely going like fatal attraction crazy, and she loves Mr. Dean, and yeah, she renounces the order, and she is spooky. She's also just like kind of not a nice person. Like there's one scene where she's talking about the the students, and she ref- she says like, I don't know, they're they're still black to me, even though like they're not black black. Like you know, they're they're black. I don't know. I, I'm paraphrasing that, but it's kind of a, a, a cringy moment. Anyway, going back to the the babies, so. The child's death, this is also bad, uh, the death angers the locals who blame and abandon the mission, putting further strain on the sisters. So everybody skedaddles. Mr. Dean fails to persuade Cloda to leave before anything else untoward happens. I hate that word, untoward. One night, Cloda, excuse me, Cloda f- confronts the now unstable Ruth, finding her wearing <gasps> a modern dress, this sexy looking red dress she ordered to entice Mr. Dean. So she is not in none modest clothing anymore. She is, I can't think of the word. She has the hots. She has the hots and she's completely rebelling against her convent. Ruth escapes Cloda's watch and finds Mr. Dean. When he rebuffs her advances, she suffers a mental breakdown and returns to the mission intent on killing Cloda. This is crazy. When Cloda rings the morning service bell, Ruth attempts to push her over the cliff edge. In the ensuing struggle, Ruth falls to her death. It's like Lord of the Rings here. Yeah, the mission leaves just as the monsoon season begins, and Cloda's final request to Mr. Dean that he tend Ruth's grave. The end. oh man that my friends is black narcissist holy shitballs wow you see i'm really glad that i watched this uh, a second time because honestly the first time i watched it, it i had no idea what to expect this is one of those movies that From the first shot, you don't know where it is going. And we need more movies like that. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right because I'm right. Okay? 
We do. Those are the best kinds of movies, honestly, in my in, in my opinion. I mean, it's just so wild. It's so wild. It's it's so out there. It's so ingeniously written. It is also, I mean, every frame in this movie is like out of a painting, like truly. Every scene, and I'm going to get this a little bit in, when I get to BTS Secrets and Scandals, but, you know, every shot in this film really is like a painting in itself. I mean, and there's just, the, the attention to detail, too, is also just so magnificent. I mean, the windows are always open in every room, and there's there's just shots where, you know, all the nuns are standing in a room, and their their dresses are just, you know, um, moving because of the wind and it's just, it's so poetic. It's so beautiful, you know, it is. And then, you know, there is also, in my opinion, you know, some critics may disagree, but there's a campiness to the film too, that I think is just so much fun. When we first see Mr. Dean, he's, you know, all these, you see all these locals outside the convent building, and then you see him ride up in this little pony with like his shirt wide open. And he, it's like, I laughed. I literally chuckled. I chortled, you know, and there's just other moments too. I mean, this is a movie that really is about the nuns, especially Ruth and Cloda, you know, trying to fight these, these, uh, these lascivious, you know, urges that they both know that they crave, but they know that they shouldn't crave them because it's bad to crave if, if, you know, you're a very strict nun, you know, except for like food, of course. Are nuns allowed to eat, like, all kinds of food? I honestly don't know anything about nuns. I was not raised Catholic or anything, so I only know about nuns from movies, and that's not a good idea because, you know, like, the nun, the horror movie The Nun, that gives a bad message to people who want to be nuns. Not all nuns are crazy. Not all nuns are, like, Sister Ruth in this film. No, 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 no. Uh, but, yeah, this is just a fun movie. A fun-ass movie. I think if you love almost soapy melodramas that are somehow very believably serious but also do have a little sense of humor you know it's this is it for you it really really is there are so many characters in this film too it's almost it almost is like a big epic opera drama you know it it everybody is so fully developed in this film i felt like i mean you know the adjunct characters they're never fully fully direct developed of course so i'm kind of contradicting what i'm saying now i now that i think about it god damn it you know what i mean bts secrets and scandals so as you know pal and pressburger adapted this book from a novel Rumor Godden was her name, and in her autobiography, A Time to Dance, A Time to Weep, uh, she talked about how she grew up in India, and she describes an event that became a huge inspiration for black narcissists. While exploring the Indian countryside with friends one day, they came across a gravestone covered with brush. When they cleared it away, all that was on the stone was the name, Sister Ruth. Spooky. That's pretty spooky, and also it's kind of crazy how... Anything you, anything that happens to you in life, anything that sound feels so trivial, any any encounter or anything, it can inspire you to write a classic. This film, it's it's not a scandal, but it I just have to say this because it won two Oscars for best color cinematography and best color art direction. Holy, fully deserved. Frozen, yeah, Frozen, that the kids movie Frozen, which came out. God damn, 11 years ago. Holy crap. Frozen is said to have taken inspiration from this movie for its snowy landscapes. Frozen art director Michael Giam, Giam, Giamo was greatly... Inf- That's not funny. I'm, I don't mean to laugh. Was gra- I'm laughing at myself. Was greatly influenced by Jar- Jack Cardiff's work in Black Narcissus. I don't really see that, honestly. I don't see the Frozen inspiration because it doesn't really snow like ever in this film. Except there's like a Christmas scene where it does snow. It's kind of an awkward scene because they're singing and then uh, Mr. Dean comes up like looking all perky and he's like very obviously drunk and is just trying to like, you know, make a scene. Sort of. I don't know. I have some things to say about Mr. Dean. I don't think he's totally a a villain in this film. I would disagree. Speaking of villains, Kathleen Byron strongly disagreed with writer, producer, and director Michael Powell on how Powell wanted to shoot Sister Ruth's arrival at the house of the man she loves, Mr. Dean. Byron said, quote, she's very happy now she's in his presence, but Powell wanted her to dart all over the place. Byron strongly disagreed, and Powell walked off the set. Uh oh. Director of photography Jack Cardiff asked, Are we ready? And Powell replied, Ask her. 
Uh, awkward. Later, Powell decided to agree with Byron, and he shot the scene, uh, see, the scene scene in the movie. When the scene was finished, Powell said it wasn't what he intended, but it was very good. That's good. Yeah, I think... I'm not an actor. I mean, I think I am in my head, but I, you know, I'm weird. So I... I can kind of agree with how it can be real. I can imagine how hard it must be to be an actor and to come onto a project. And there's just one little scene that you just really disagree with because you just don't think it's something that your character would do. But unfortunately you don't really have full control. The director does. And then many times that's happened where the director decides to make somebody do something that's totally out there. And then the movie isn't good. So yeah, it's crappy. I am glad though that pal, you know, this was just a little mini, mini brawl. A mini violent, non-violent, no, not violent, a mini non-violent brawl, but, you know, they seem to have made up, I hope. The National Legion, Legion of Decency, which was a Catholic group founded by the Archbishop of Cincinnati in 1934, banned the film, even though it had already opened in New York City and Los Angeles. The rank organization, a British entertainment conglomerate, was eager the film get released in more U.S. theaters, so they made several cuts. Why was this so controversial? Well, I think because it portrays nuns in a pretty pretty intense light um the movie like i said is erotic i mean it is you know there's a shot i didn't even notice the first time where when we first see the inside of the convent there are these paintings and and uh 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 what are paintings called in a church like when they're on the walls glass stained windows yeah that's what i'm thinking of right and like jesus is always on there and he's like oh yeah yeah in this movie there are these paintings of all these topless naked women. And it's, I mean, it's a painting, so it's not real, real. But yeah, this movie, again, came out in the 40s. To show that in a movie, wow. So the movie was edited by 900 feet or so and made and had 10 cuts in all. All of Sister Clodagh's memories of Ireland were cut. Uh, the close-up of Sister Ruth applying lipstick also fell victim to censorship. Oh, for God's sake. Um, a few lines of suggestive dialogue were also eliminated. For example, Mr. Dean's line to Sister Bryony, you will be doing me a great favor when you educate the local, the local girls. I don't, is that like meant to be dirty? I'm, it's, I'm lost. Finally, the wording of the foreword was changed so that there would be no possibility to mistake the order of nuns as Catholic. Now it's said that, quote, a group of Protestant nuns in, in mysterious India find adventure, sacrifice, and tragedy. Oh, censorship is just pathetic in my opinion. Most of the time. Most of the time, I think it's pathetic. Johann Vermeer, he was the very famous uh, painter. He did Girl with a Pearl Earring. He, uh, yeah, 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 he did that, right? Time out. Girl with, yeah, he did. That's the one I'm thinking of. Sorry, I took a class my senior year of high school and we learned about this for like 10 minutes. He's been mentioned as an aspiration for the lighting and color palette. A tribute to the Dutch painter can be seen in the opening scene when the mother superior is reading a letter while facing a window. This is an image used by Vermeer in some of his most famous paintings. I want his paintings now. I want shots and clips of this movie blown up on a big painting and painted, I mean, boarded to my walls in my bedroom, for real. But I might scare people when they came over. Michael Powell, one of the directors, initially ruled that the actresses playing the nuns would not wear any lipstick on camera. However, after a couple of days filming, they noticed that the technic... That... Blah, they noticed that the Technicolor film made it look as though they were. The solution was to have the actresses wear lipstick in flesh color tones, which made their lips look more natural. Didn't even notice. Lipstick, I'm not really a fan of. It smells... Yeah... The much-admired Himalayan scenery was all created in the studio. This is insane. It's all in a studio. It's all glass shots and hanging miniatures, much to the surprise of some cast and crew members who were anticipating a location shoot in Asia. Yeah, all in a studio. Holy crap. I did not believe this was in the studio at all. I believed the entire time this was shot on location. Wow. 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 Wowzers. The best moment. Every shot was my favorite, but every, I mean, my favorite moment though was probably that end when Sister Ruth and Sister Cloda are fighting and Sister Ruth falls off. Man, intense, intense, intense. And Sister Ruth is like one of probably my new favorite characters. 
One of my new favorite characters. I cannot talk. I'm sorry. One of my new favorite characters. Okay, there we go. Period. Mais est-ce que je suis d'accord avec les critiques de ce film? Oui, je suis d'accord avec les critiques de ce film. I agree with what the critics said about this movie. Jeffrey M. Anderson of Combustible Celluloid said, Black Narcissist, you could say it's the most sensual nun movie ever made. I agree. What other movies have sexy nuns? Oh, there's this movie called Benedetta that came out in 2021. It is banana. I keep saying bananas. It's it's crazy. Yeah, go see that. It's much. Uh, do not watch it with your parents, though. I would not recommend that. Alan Almack. Of the, McGru- of the MacGuffin said, it is a film about bold colors and enormous landscapes, about tension and eroticism boiling beneath the facades that our characters so desperately try to put up. Indeed, I agree. Noelle Murray of AV Club said, the movie remains a rapturous, near indescribable work of cinematic art. I agree. It's almost indescribable. Like, I hope I did my best explaining this movie, but I think I messed up. This isn't a movie that you can explain in one sentence. Oh, no. Basil Wright of The Spectator said, designed and photographed, the movie is designed and photographed with an almost breathtaking sense of beauty. Beautiful film. I agree. Dave Calhoun of Time Out said, theater this Michael Powell's film most certainly is, as stressed by the gothic melodrama of the story and the acting, the studio setting with its beautiful backdrops and vivid colors and the most deliberate of characters and events. It is theater. It is very theatery, but made for the screen. If that makes sense. When I say that, I mean that, you know, they obviously get to expand on the colors and everything. And it is so breathtaking. Dillis Powell of Sunday Times UK. I hope I'm saying that name right. I'm sorry. Black Narcissus uh, says, Black Narcissus has the oddly uncomfortable air of a work which has never quite decided on its mood. But when place is allowed to dominate, this is a film of astonishing quality. I can kind of agree with that. But you see, I love movies that aren't one mood. I love movies that aren't one genre. A lot of critics are like, no, that's bad. And I'm like, no, I like it. I mean, sometimes it can be like, a joke when it's not meaning to be a joke, you know, but in this case, I do love it. This movie is so many genres. Kevin Marr of Times UK, another UK Times, British people, you love Times, the word, says, watching the film today, Ruth feels, the character of Ruth, feels more misunderstood than ever. Yeah, you know, I kind of thought about that. Ruth, I think, is not a villain in this film. I may have said that earlier in this episode. I take it back. I recant. I think Sister Ruth is someone who just doesn't know any, she doesn't really know how to live in society besides being religious in society. And when she takes this leap and decides to leave her her religious society, she doesn't know what to do. And she unfortunately goes nuts. Not really her fault. I mean, you should never try to murder someone if you leave any society, but I can kind of agree with that. Yeah, Ruth is, is, um, I feel a little bit bad. I think she just needs some therapy. Is it? Really? One of the best movies of all time. You bet your religious British ass it is. Religious, religious. Why can I, why can I not say religious? Religious, religious. Okay. You bet your ass this is one of the best movies of all time. Wow. Yes. Yes. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. It is, I've seen some wild movies in my day. This just stands out as one of the most, intense dramas ever i also read i think that this this was remade as a series on the bbc like just a few years ago which i really do want to see and yeah see this movie you guys even if you don't love movies as much as i do i guarantee you that you will be at least a little bit glued to your screen when you watch this film if you see this in the theater too go see it if it gets you know shown in theaters and in 35 millimeter or whatever go see it Honestly, insane. Powell and Pressburger, you guys, I I forgive you for if I was ever mean about your previous films. I really, this this tops it. This is the cake. This is the icing on the top of the cake. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode. I will see you next time. In the meantime, get your ass off the couch and go to the goddamn movies. Need I remind you again and again and again, have you not learned anything? I don't care if you're in school and you have a paper due in the morning. Do your homework earlier in the day. And if you have class later in the day, skip that class and do it when you're supposed to be in class and just call in sick. Okay. I called in sick one time. Actually, I didn't call in sick. I just didn't go in because breaking down part two was in theaters and I decided to go see it at midnight. And then the next day in French class, my teacher didn't even know I wasn't there. 
It's no big deal. Did I fail the class? No, I did not fail the class. You cannot fail the class too, okay? Just go to the movies. Please support your local cinema. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Oh, you made it. You made it. You made it. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of I'm Reviewing Here. New episodes drop Tuesdays and Fridays. You can get this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at I'm Reviewing Here. You can also subscribe on YouTube. New episodes drop there the same day they drop on the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Please leave a review if you'd like. Be mean. Be nice. Hit on me. I don't really care. Candor really, really is important to me, and, you know, it helps the podcast, too. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. This podcast is brought to you especially by Nervous Chuckles. That is my fake production company because I make people nervously chuckle all the time because they never know if I'm telling a joke or not, so they're always like, <laughs> oh, yeah, do I laugh? Do I not laugh? Is he serious? Is he insane? Did he get out of the, the loony? W what's going on? So if I made you nervously chuckle, then that means that I did my job, and thank you. There is uh, no funding for this podcast, but if you want to give me money, then uh, yeah, like hit me up. DM me. Bye-bye.